hello and welcome to Ground Zero at the Geneva Motor Show, where we're going to take a walk around and show you some of the hottest new metal on offer. Right, we've walked in the doors and the car that I've made a beeline for is this, the world's most powerful production car, the 420 km an hour Bugatti Chiron. We actually saw this car in Frankfurt last year, where it was thinly disguised as the Vision Gran Turismo concept. But what we didn't know was the performance. The Chiron produces 1100 kilowatts and 1600 newton meters from its W16 engine, which is fed by four turbochargers. That's 25% more grunt than you got from Aveyron. The 420 km an hour top speed is limited for now, but Bugatti has already said its VMAX will be north of 440 km an hour. Plus, it looks absolutely mega. Now here's another car with looks well and truly on its side, the all new Aston Martin DB11. This thing is new from the ground up. The whole shebang uh, has been changed and they've really evolved the Aston Martin design language quite a bit, particularly around the nose. Um, some of the detailing is incredible from the vents on the bonnet to uh, the headlights but the overall proportions too are phenomenal right down to that sleek tail. Under the bonnet of course a V12 engine but an all new V12, 5.2 litres now with twin turbochargers, 448 kilowatts. Officially Porsche's showstopper is called the 911R but it's easiest to think of it as a 911 Greatest Hits Special Edition. The 4 litre engine and body panels are taken from the GT3 RS. It only weighs 1370 kilograms, making it the lightest model in the 911 range, and it has a six speed manual. It also continues Porsche's tradition of charging more for less. It has no rear seats, no air conditioning, and the windows are plastic, but it'll be over 400,000 when it lands in Australia, making it the second most expensive model in the 911 range. Now back in the land of reality, and Toyota is the latest manufacturer to jump aboard the small SUV craze with this the CHR. Now we saw it last year in the form of a concept, but this is the production version, toned down fairly heavily from that concept, although it's still pretty out there as far as Toyota designs go. A lot of really sharp lines going on and some big bulbous uh, additions like the tail lights for example. Now this one's a hybrid, we're also getting a 1.2 litre four cylinder direct injection turbo. Should be fun. And speaking of fun for Audi, it is all about small in the form of the all new Q2. Now obviously it's smaller than the Q3 by about 20 centimetres in length. It's also got some pretty cool design touches, a very different grille than what we've seen on Audis in the past. They're trying to evolve it and uh, set up a unique grille for the Q models, the SUVs. Plus, some interesting design touches like the customizable D-pillar. Uh, now, this thing's due in Australia early in 2017, and the big news is the price. You're looking starting from about mid $30,000. Toyota and Audi aren't the only ones showing SUVs here at Geneva. Meet the Maserati Levante, the Italian brand's first SUV. It's a hugely important model for the company, with execs predicting it will double Maserati sales globally and in Australia. Power comes from an entry-level turbo diesel or two tunes of Maserati's V6 petrol. And you can expect the V8 to go under the bonnet at some point too. It won't be cheap though. Expect prices to start from around 150 grand. There's even a little bit of Australia at the Geneva Motor Show. Okay, not quite, but the Opal GT concept was produced in Melbourne. Now up front is a tiny three-cylinder turbocharged engine, and the whole car is tiny. It's a little two-seater, weighs less than a tonne. No plans to build it at this stage, but the boss of Opal is keen. And the good news is, he says if it does go into production, it will maintain its rear drive layout. So there it is, the Geneva Motor Show for 2016. To catch up with all the news from the show, go to wheelsmag.com.au.